Now let's look at logarithms and logarithmic functions. And we're going to be able to evaluate logarithms by rewriting them as exponential functions and vice versa, and be able to graph them and, and explore the properties of graphs of logarithmic functions. So let's kind of define the logarithm first. And again, uh, the base b cannot be equal to 1, and it must be positive. A logarithm of x with a base of b is denoted by the log base b of x. And that's how you say it, the log base b of x. And it is defined as the exponent that y makes in the equation b to the y equals x. For all x's that are positive, there is a number y such that the log base b of x is equal to y if and only if b to the y equals x. So uh, what you see on the left-hand side, this is called the logarithmic form. And what you see on the right is called the exponential form. Logarithms were invented to be able to solve exponential equations. Today, logarithms are used for many other purposes, such as creating models of, of things that behave in a logarithmic way. So uh, let's look at a quick example. If the log base 3 of 27 equals y, we can rewrite that in exponential form as an equivalent statement. 3, which is the base, to the y power, which is the exponent, is equal to 27. So if an exponential function looks something like this, and that, that would be with a base greater than 1, a logarithmic function is going to be its inverse, and it's going to look generally something like this because you will recall all inverses are reflections about the line y equals x because we're switching the x's and y's. And in fact, that's what's happening here by going from logarithmic to exponential form. So let's get some practice in rewriting things from logarithmic to exponential form and vice versa. So we'll take log base 3 of 9 equals 2 and rewrite that into exponential form. And the log base 3 of 9 equals 2 can be written as... 9 equals the base 3 raised to the power 2. If we took another example of the log base 10, which is a very common base, of 1 over 100 equals negative 2, and wanted to rewrite that to exponential form, we would get uh, 1 over 100 is equal to the base, which is 10, raised to the negative 2 power. So 1 over 100 equals 10 to the minus 2 power. So that's the exponential form. Let's go ahead and look at the reverse of this process and rewriting something from exponential to logarithmic form. So we have 5 to the third equals 125. That's an exponential form. And we want to turn it into logarithmic form. We're going to have that base of 5. So it's going to be the log base 5. Um, the power is going to be our answer and the result of 125 is going to go right here in the uh, input for the logarithm. So it's going to be rewritten as the log base 5 of 125 equals 3. So 5 to the third equals 125 turns into the log base 5 of 125 equals 3. Let's look at 27 to the 1 third power equals 3 and rewrite that into logarithmic form. So again our base is 27 So it's the log base 27. Our power is 1 third, so that becomes the output of the logarithmic function. And our input is the result of the exponential function 3. So 27 to the 1 third power equals 3 is rewritten as the log base 27 of 3 equals 1 third. Let's evaluate the log base 3 of 243. So we're going to let the log base 3 of 243 be equal to some unknown quantity y. Rewritten into exponential form, that becomes 243 equals base of 3 raised to the y power. Now, 243 and 3 are not the same base, but we can get them into the same base of 3. You'll recall from a previous screencast, we have to have the same base to be able to use that equality property of, law of exponentials. So 243 is the same as 3 to the fifth power. Therefore, we can use that equality property and set the powers, the exponents, equal to each other since the bases are the same. 3 to the 5th equals 3 to the y, therefore 5 equals y. 
Let's look at the graphs of logarithmic functions. Now, the paired function of all logarithms is f of x equals the log base b of x. And this generally breaks into two cases, where the base is greater than 1, and this would be analogous to exponential growth. The logarithm of function is increasing from left to right, and has follows this left-hand pattern here. And three critical points on this graph occur at 1 over b common negative 1, because when the input is uh, 1 over b, we get an output of negative 1. In other words, b to the minus 1 power equals 1 over b. A second important point we can use to graph these is the point 1 comma 0, because the log base b of Zero, of 1 equals 0. In other words, b to the 0 equals 1 in exponential form. And then the final point we can plot is b comma 1 because the log base b of b is equal to 1 because b to the 1 equals b. So those three critical points can define any of these graphs where b is greater than 1. We have kind of the opposite effect in the second case where b is between 0 and 1 and you'll recall those are exponential decay uh, functions. In the logarithmic function like that where the base is between 0 and 1, it's constantly decreasing. Three critical points are at b comma 1, 1 comma 0, and 1 over b comma negative 1. They're actually the same three points as the left-hand graph, it's just their order changes. Now a couple of important notes for all these logarithmic graphs, the parent functions, they're always going to have x values that is positive, that are positive. We cannot use an input of a negative number because no positive number raised to any power is going to give you a negative number. The range, however, can be all real numbers. And it's important to note these are the inverses of exponential growth and decay functions. So let's look at one, one of these functions. So we'll take the parent function f of x equals log base 3 of x. The base is 3. And we're going to go ahead and use those three points we talked about. Um, 1 over b, negative 1, 1 comma 0, and b comma 1, where b is 3. So by plotting those three points, we get the points 1 third comma negative 1, 1 comma 0, and 3 comma 1. And plotting those three points yields the three points I'm going to show in red. And that allows us to sketch that curve. Now remember the domain of this is uh, x is always greater than 0. It can never actually be negative or 0. And f of x is going to be the set of all real numbers. Let's take a look at the second case, a case where the base is between 0 and 1. f of x equals the log base 1 fourth of x. So the base in the case, 1 fourth, we're going to use those same three points, uh, 1 fourth comma 1, 1 comma 0, and 4 comma negative 1. When we sketch the graph, we get uh, 1 fourth comma 1, 1 comma 0, and 4 comma negative 1. Of course, logarithmic functions can be transformed very similarly to all the other transformations you've learned about. We have the h and k which are used to horizontally or vertically translate the graph. H will shift it left or right. K will shift it, shift it vertically up or down. And also, that value in front, which is the multiplier, A does two things. If it's negative, it reflects it across the x-axis. And if it's a number other than 1, it's actually going to stretch or compress the graph depending on how big A is. Again, these translations are exactly like all the other translations you've studied so far. So that being said, let's look at a function that has several transformations at once. f of x equals 1 third log base 6 of x minus 1. It's important to note that that minus 1 is not in parentheses, the x minus 1, so the minus 1 is outside it. So this is has a parent function log base 6 of x. First transformation we're going to note is that a of 1 third. 
which means that since it's between 0 and 1, the graph is compressed vertically. If it were greater than 1, it would be stretched vertically. The second transformation we're going to note, we're kind of going from left to right here, is the h. It's just equal to 0, so there is no horizontal shift. And finally, the k of negative 1 means the graph is going to be translated down one unit. And in fact, if we were to try this, graphing this on a calculator or manually, we would see um, that as compared to the parent function log base 6 of x, f of x equals 1 third log 6 of x minus 1 shifts it um, down by 1 and compresses the graph um, vertically. f of x equals 4 log base 1 third of x plus 2. Notice the x plus 2 is in parentheses now, so we're going to have an h value other than 0. This is a transformation of the parent function log base 1 third of x. First thing, the first thing we'll note is that a equals 4. Therefore, this graph is stretched vertically by a factor of 4. Everything has been multiplied by 4, so that kind of makes sense. Our h value, because this is in the form x minus h, is going to be negative 2. Therefore, the graph is shifted, translated two units to the left. And those are the only transformations that take place because there is no vertical shift. Um, so this graph, as compared to the parent function, which we actually already looked at, is going to be stretched vertically, translated two units to the left, and uh, not translated up or down at all. So what we've looked at today is it, it, we've looked at a new class of functions called logarithmic functions, and logarithms are used mainly as the inverse of exponential functions, and we'll look at a screencast next where we use them to solve exponential functions. We also looked at the graphs and translations of logarithmic functions.